When I charge my iPhone, it just sits there. Yes, like a chill guy, but super lifeless and boring. So let's fix that. Now I could just buy a phone dock that charges your phone, watch, and earpods for under $20, which is a pretty good deal. But no, instead we're gonna make it ourselves because that's what design works do, baby. Plus, I have a really good idea for this. I want a dock that turns my iPhone into an arcade machine. Not just looks like an arcade machine, but works like one too. So here's the plan. For this build to be successful, it needs to charge my phone, obviously, look like it came straight out of the 80s, and actually do the thing. Functionality wise, I'm keeping things simple. I picked up this small Bluetooth gamepad and an Apple MagSafe charger. Reason being, I'm not an electrical engineer. I already know these components work great on their own, I just need to design the gooey middle bits that hold everything together. Let's focus there. Now credit to 8Bidu, this micro gamepad is actually pretty sweet for only 20 bucks. Plus, we'll only need a few inputs like the D-pad and action buttons for arcade games, so I know it's going to work perfectly. I designed these hourglass shaped buttons that print in place and fit right above the gamepad. The idea here is that you press the 3D printed button, which then presses the gamepad button below it. Kind of like buttonception. And of course, we hit our first roadblock. If I add more of these big curvy buttons to the rest of the control panel, they'll start intersecting. Whack. So instead, I made these short kings that have a smaller footprint, but still achieve the same goal. Now, I have to make sure the buttons stay in place, and that's super important for a reason I haven't talked about yet. So here's the thing, on something like a Game Boy, there's a PCB inside that holds the buttons in place, but if you take it apart, you get a mess. In our design, I need to be able to remove the controller. That's in case I need to charge it or I want to play non-arcade games that uses the shoulder buttons. So add that one to the list, controller must be removable. With the buttons sorted out, let's talk about the D-pad. Now obviously an arcade machine uses a joystick, not a D-pad. But they both essentially do the same thing, provide directional movement, just in a different way. So the idea here is that I can design a joystick that sits above the D-pad and translates those movements. I tried to match the D-pad shape and I realized it would just slip off and not work. I needed a way to hold the joystick in place but still let it flex. Well lucky for you, your boy is really good at googling. And it didn't take me too long to find this. What is it? It's a ultra compact orthoplanar spring, obviously. But really, it's exactly what we need. It's a plastic spring that allows flexibility without breakability. And I made my own version here. Pretty sweet. With the controller figured out, it was time to build the cabinet. I've seen some cool countertop arcades, so that's the look I'm going for. I sketched out a profile and started sculpting in CAD. I added snap-in side panels so I could easily swap out artwork without taking the whole thing apart. Of course, I integrated the MagSafe charger and added some through holes for cable pass-through. Now to make the controller removable, I big brained this capsule shaped hinge that lets you flip out the entire panel and reveal the gamepad below it. It's just held down by gravity and these little locking tabs. So about 80% of the time, it works every time. Now for the side art. I could just print out a sticker and apply it to the side, which is literally how all arcades are done. But why do it that way? I already have a 3D printer and all the colors ready. I just need to spend 10 hours figuring out how to create a template in Illustrator, export it out as a JPEG, import it into Maker Labs Keychain Maker, export that out into Bamboo Slicer, add a negative part as a cut tool, and overlap it with my side panel part. <laughs> Easy peasy. Thankfully, after that, it was time to print in final colors. I sent everything to Bamboo Slicer and sent myself to take a nap. Okay, print's done and it's time to assemble. Thankfully, I've been doing some small test prints, so everything was fitting beautifully. I put the MagSafe charger into place. I'm so glad I took the time to figure out this hinge mechanism. The control panel just flips out and the gamepad slides in so you get this really satisfying click. Now the moment of truth. I fired up RetroArch on my phone and it just worked. It looks so good, like way better than I would have thought. And it works really well. You can leave it plugged in for charging or just unplugged like a tiny gaming station. I ended up taking this around my house just to play on it and not even charging. I did end up making one variation, which has the MagSafe charger inside the cabinet walls. 
Now, this is arguably a worse design because now I can't access the side buttons or rotate the phone horizontally, but having the phone sit inside makes it look more like an arcade screen, which I like. This whole project reminded me why I like making stuff. It's not always to solve a problem, but to have fun. It's a tiny slice of arcade on my desk, totally unnecessary and totally awesome. Let me know if you're interested in one. I might make these available online. Thanks for watching.